How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about buying my first gold coin. This is a Cougar Rand 22 karat South African gold coin. Here's the back. Now you might wonder why the heck I would buy something like this because when you buy something expensive and you just have it laying around, it represents a theft danger because someone could come in and just steal it, I guess. For one, I don't plan to keep this for long, but for a very long time, I had this curiosity of owning like a piece of gold or something and just feeling how heavy it is. Um, too bad that anything that's like one pound or one kilogram, it's very, very, very expensive. One kilogram of this stuff would cost about $45,000. So even this one ounce uh, gold coin here costs about $1,320 USD. Now that's quite expensive for this little thing and I bought it from this place called APMEX and I don't know, they look pretty reputable so then I went ahead and bought it. I thought they were going to charge my credit card or maybe ask me for some numbers for a checking account but instead uh, after I bought it online, they're like, oh yeah, send in a check. They should have told me I needed to send in a check before actually purchasing it because um, when I bought it, I thought I could just enter in some checking account information. It'll automatically do um, sort of a automatic clearinghouse withdrawal from it. But instead they're like, oh, here's the address. Uh, send a check to this address and you got to do it within a certain number of days uh, or else they're going to charge some fee or something like that. Now this laptop is an XPS 15 MSRP. It would have cost about $2,500. But instead I got it on sale, uh, refurbished. It's about $1,500. So in price comparison, these things, uh, you know, they're pretty close because I don't know, like $200 more for this laptop than this gold coin. So I find it interesting to like try to get something as close as possible to compare the value here. The value on this thing, I don't think it's going to drop all that much. It's not going to go down below a thousand or something. Uh, but this laptop, I think if I use it for one year or two years, it's going to, the price of this thing will plummet greatly. Um, and basically it's going to drop, I don't know, like four or five years to maybe $500. However, this thing is going to appreciate. Now, another reason I wanted to get a gold coin mainly is just to touch and hold. Um, I've never ever touched a piece of gold that is one ounce. Like people don't let you go and, you know, get your grubby fingers on this stuff, especially um, even like a gold bar. I would have liked a gold bar, but that's too expensive. But so I bought a one ounce uh, coin instead. Now, when I buy something like this, I hold it and I go, okay, yeah, this feels, you know, pretty hefty. Uh, it probably is gold. And then you hold one of these things. I have a coin that is as close to the size as possible, but you know, it's still a little bit smaller. This is a New Zealand $2 coin. And you can definitely feel that the density is uh, much lighter than this gold coin. Now I want to figure out, is this real gold? Did they just send me a piece of lead? It is from a reputable place, but maybe inside this is fake gold or something. Maybe they just put something really dense, maybe inside it's lead and then it's uh, gold covered or something like that. So um, I'm going to weigh it and then check the density and uh, try and figure out uh, if it's actually real gold. So here's a Cougar Rand 1979 gold coin again. It says Fin Gold, one ounce, fine gold. On the edges, there's a lot of ridges over there. And then on the back, it says Sud Africa, South Africa. Now you gotta know, this thing is not 99.9% .9 pure gold. It's actually 22 karat gold. Uh, and the rest of it is actually copper. That's why it has this little uh, kind of yellowish tint to it. Adding copper makes this um, a bit harder so that you can handle it a bit better and you know it won't kind of dent if you drop it. In order to calculate the density, I'm not really going to drop it inside some water. I don't have anything to measure that. Instead, I have this caliper right here. Yes, I do have some wires coming out of here because I refuse to buy any more of these button cells. Um, instead, I kind of wired it up like this and I put a AAA battery in the back because I have a lot of AAA batteries and not a lot of button cells. So now I wired it that way. Now it can uh, run forever. Anyhow, I zero out my calipers here and I'm going to measure this diameter. 32.68 millimeter. The thickness over here is about 2.7 millimeter. But you got to know this 2.7 thickness is the thickness of the highest point of this coin. All these indentations, it's not going to be accounted for when you calculate the density. So now let's check the weight of this thing. 
it's 33.93 grams. Now I have this New Zealand dollar over here, 26.45 millimeter and 2.6 millimeter thick. And then the weight is 10 grams. So now you have the diameter and the thickness, do a little bit of geometry, pi r squared times the thickness, you get the volume and then the weight of it, and then the weight divided by the volume, then you get the density. The Cougarant density here I calculated is 14.98. Now, this includes those empty spaces um, around the markings on top of the coin and behind. So the density is not quite correct here. Um, on the other hand, if I look at the New Zealand $2 over here, the density is 7 grams per cubic centimeters. So it's uh, less than half of the density. So, you know, I'm holding on to this thing and you can actually feel that it's quite light compared to this gold coin. It's like, yeah, this is a bit bigger, but you can just kind of feel it's, it's you know, much denser. It not, not only that it's heavier, it's denser. Now, if the inside of this thing was lead instead, I would have been able to tell because the density of this thing would be a lot lower. Um, it would probably hover around 12 grams per centimeter cube or whatnot. Now, working backwards here, because I like to look at things from different angles to double check that, you know, double check my work is correct so that I know uh, whatever I'm calculating is correct, basically. There's um, not all gold in here, so then you gotta have some calculation and it's um, you can't just measure the thickness either because of the markings on the coin. Gold's density is 19.32 grams per centimeter cube. Copper is 8.96 grams per centimeter cube. So if you work backwards from that, you'll see that the volume um, that um, based on this weight, because one troy ounce of this gold coin is 31.1 grams. Uh, if you work backwards from it, it means the gold will take up 1.63 cubic centimeters um, of whatever volume this coin is. The copper will take up 0.32 cubic centimeters. Now, if you add these two numbers up, you think the volume would be equal to what I calculated before, which should have been 1.93, but instead it's 2.26. And I was thinking about it, it's like, oh, oh, it must have been all this empty space on the coin over here. So I went back and calculated it. I used the caliper this way where I measure um, how much empty space it is between the highest point on this coin and the flat point on the coin and it just kind of estimates like oh you know this is about 85 percent uh empty space uh it's hard to tell you should really should have been uh, dunking this in water but i don't have something like that to measure it with so i'm just doing a rough very rough estimation of the front being 70 percent empty space the back being 85 percent empty space and then when I calculated that, then um, it comes out roughly uh, equal to the volume uh, of the coin itself. So, you know, for me, this is a good enough check to kind of give me some confidence that this is actually uh, real gold. So thanks for watching this video. It's just my really strange curiosity of uh, looking up stuff that I've never tried before. I mean, how many people have actually held an actual real gold coin or maybe a gold bar even. I have not. I mean, I've held some gold jewelry, but usually they're like these little tiny things and they're much lighter. They, they're they never, um, you know, close to one ounce gold coin like this. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, comment down below. Let me know if you've ever held a gold coin like this or maybe a gold bar. If you're interested in supporting my channel, don't forget to check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook, you can cancel it before the subscription expires and you can still keep this book and also help benefit this channel. I also have a Patreon link over here where I give perks such as help with your credit score or help with your finances. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a new notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.